In this video, I'm going to share how you can make an extra $1,000 every single week using only your phone and Facebook Marketplace. So whether you're looking for a reliable side hustle or you want to go all in on being self-employed, be sure to hit the subscribe button. I'm going to be posting a new video every single day showing how I make a living from flipping couches. Some of these videos I actually recorded over a year ago. I packaged them together and sold them as a course, but now I've decided to put them on YouTube for free for you guys to watch. So if you're just tuning in, I recommend going back to the beginning of the series so you can watch these videos in order. I'll put a link for that first video on the screen, but if not, let's jump into today's video. All right, this section is on inventory management. The reason why I'm making a section for inventory management is because I felt that it was a necessary skill to scale your couch flipping business if you wanted to do that. In this last section, I talked about money management. It's basically about being organized with your money. This section is about being organized with the products that you're selling. So in this case, couches. So no matter what type of business you're running, if you're wanting to scale any type of business, being organized with things is gonna help you make more money. It's just plain and simple. If you're running a business where you sell any type of goods or products, then you're going to have to learn how to manage an inventory. And even if you're doing a service-based business, you're still going to have to manage equipment, supplies, employees, and your time. You can really relate a lot of these principles to other aspects, but in this case, I'm going to talk about how to manage an inventory of couches. Previously in this course, we talked about um, where to keep all of your couches. It'll most likely be in a storage unit. You should have already found a place by now to keep all your couches. And by now, you should have a good idea of how much space you have to work with. I started out with a 10 foot by 15 foot storage unit, and I knew exactly how many couches I could fit in it. And I suggest you figure out how much space you have to work with and how many couches you can store in there. The smaller the unit, the, the less inventory you can keep. So it's always important to know how many couches you can possibly fit in your space. So that way you can make sure to utilize the space that you have. If you're paying for a storage unit that can fit 40 couches in it, but you're only keeping 10 to 15 in it at all times, then there's really just a lot of wasted space and you, you either need to downsize or ramp up your production. It's good to think about these things because you really don't want to be wasting money or space. You want to just be to find a sweet spot um, when it comes to how much space you have and how many couches you can possibly flip with the amount of time that you have. So no matter the size of your couch storage space, you need to start by determining the maximum amount of couches that you can fit in your storage space. I suggest standing all of your couches straight up and down against the wall, so that against each wall, so that way there's a pathway in the middle. That's what I found is the best way to fit the most amount of couches in your unit. And if you're gonna do that, then I recommend making little parking spots for your couches. You'll see what I mean. I would get tape and lay it along the ground and make little parking spots that were specifically designed for couches. Um, I figured most couches are between three and three and a half feet wide. So I'd make each parking space like three and a half to four feet wide. And, and I'd have them just one after the other along each side of the walls. That way, if you fit a couch in every single parking spot, then you know exactly how many couches you can fit in your storage space. Personally, I love the whole parking spot idea because it's super easy to see how many empty spots there are in your, in your storage unit. That way you can make a mental note of how many more couches you can go acquire to fill up your storage. Uh, because you want to be keeping the spots full, because if you're not, then you're wasting the space. So after figuring out how you personally want to organize your storage unit, whether you use the parking spot method, organize it in some other way, now it's time to make a record of your current couch inventory. I just use Google Sheets, and I have a spreadsheet of all of my current couch inventory. I try to keep it 
consistently updated and I will mark the couches that I end up selling as sold and move them to a different spreadsheet. Um, I can show you what I do and um, feel free to, to do it your own way, but this is the way I do it and it has really helped me to keep track of a lot of different couches coming in and out. It's super convenient, especially when your inventory is getting kind of big uh, because then you can know which couches are left and which ones you end up selling. And maintaining an inventory database is not only helpful if you're couch flipping full time, but I think it's just as helpful for those who are wanting to make this a side hustle. You wanna know why? Because if you have another full time job and you're trying to juggle couch flipping, you owe it to yourself to stay on top of things and stay organized. Because if you just keep your inventory updated and you keep it on your phone, on a Google Sheet, then you don't have to be trying to remember, oh, which couches do I have left? Because you've got enough other things going on. So either way, keeping a good inventory tracker is going to be really helpful for you to stay on top of your business and to just maximize your time. So now I'm going to demonstrate how I keep my records from the sold sheet to the current inventory sheet and marking Facebook ads as sold. I know we kind of talked about this in previous sections, but I just want to give you guys all of the resources you need to be successful with couch flipping. If I've found something useful and if I feel like it has helped me make more money, then I wanna share that with you guys. Some of you guys will copy what I'm doing to a T. And if that's you, great. Some of you will make your own little adaptations to my systems that will fit your individual needs. Either way, um, I want you to know that by feeding off what I've done, um, it will really help you speed up the learning process and get you to a point where you're consistently flipping couches every day, every week, um, and that, that way you'll be satisfied with the amount of money you're making. So remember, it took me two and a half years to learn and apply all these things. Don't beat yourself up if, if you don't have a habit of these things right away, but I challenge you to just try and incorporate as many of these things into your own business as you can and if you do so it'll help you to be more organized and more successful. Um, I just want to create a community of the most successful couch flippers on the planet. So thanks for being a part of it and if any of you have things that have helped you to be more successful make sure to share them with with other couch flippers. Let's help each other out and uh, if there's anything in this course that you also think I should add or subtract from this course, make sure to leave feedback for me. A lot of the later sections in this course are a lot more just general business principles, but they still very much so relate to couch flipping. I'm including these things because I feel like they're the most helpful skills that can help you to succeed in the couch flipping business, but also in other entrepreneurial endeavors. Sections three through 14 of this course were very strictly couch flipping material. We, we went over every step of the way from beginning to end on how to flip couches and make money doing it. So if I were you, on those sections, three through 14, I would follow them as closely as possible. And to try to not put your own spin on them, especially at the beginning, to just really try and copy what I'm doing. That way you get to a point where you're making good money and you'll have a little more mental energy to kind of think about your own business that you're running and so that way you can add your own spin to it. But until then, I would just copy every word for word exactly what I'm doing. But these later sections in this course, a lot of them you can incorporate as you wish like the whole managing money section and managing inventory. These sections are really just to help you to be as efficient as you can. The next section we're gonna be talking about is similar along the lines of managing your money and inventory. We're gonna talk about managing your time. The thing is, is that wasting money and wasting couches isn't as bad because you can always get more of those. You can always get more money, you can always get more couches, but if you waste time, 
you're not getting that back. So you really want to figure out how to use your time as wisely as possible. Managing your time as an entrepreneur is essential to becoming successful. So I'm gonna be talking about the best ways that I've learned how to manage my time, and that if it, these things have helped me go from zero to flipping over 800 couches in just the last two years. And these will not only help you to make more money, but it will also help free up more time so you can do things that are meaningful to you. That's one thing about couch flipping that I've really loved is that it's provided a way for me to one, make a lot of money, but two, to do it in a reasonable amount of time to where I have time left over to do the things that I, I enjoy. So hope you still have a little more room left in your notebook because this next section is one of my favorites.